Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And if you're new here, I am Jim. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm making a fantasy scape, for lack of a better word. I am going to be starting in Lightroom and sending a photo over to Boris Effects Optics, which is an amazing plugin. Works great with Lightroom and Photoshop and gives you all this kind of creative control to do stuff that honestly you can't really do anywhere else. I did a kind of a first look, kind of preview whatever kind of video about Boris FX Optics. Uh, I'll put a link to it there. So if you haven't seen that or have not heard of the program, it's worth checking out that video. Today I want to show you kind of how I just create something kind of out of nothing. So I've got this photo here in Lightroom. And as I said, it works really, Boris works uh, really well as a plugin. So I'm going to go ahead and click create and edit in and click on optics. I think I'll make that pro photo. This is fine, really. I'm going to click edit and I'm going to open it up here in optics so I can go in and do kind of the creative things that I want to do. So here we go. And again, I recommend checking out that other video because I'm just going to do some things here that I've already explained in that previous video. But what I want to do is just basically turn this into a much different looking photo. And that's the power of optics. I mean, it just gives you so many interesting creative things. Hopefully you'll find some of these to be kind of fun and you can experiment with them uh, on your own photos. So I've got my current layer that I'm on. And the first thing I want to do is just make this a black and white. So I went into the uh, color tab, clicked on the black and white and chose normal, basic, simple stuff. That's all I'm going to do there. But now I'm going to go in and add another layer. So each effect is effectively its own layer. I'm on a new layer and here I'm going to go into film lab and film effects and I'm going to get this crisp cottage. So I'm getting a little bit moodier black and white, but I'm going to take the opacity way down something like about 25. I don't want to overdo it. So something about like that. So if you ever want to compare, you can just turn this filter off. There it is before and there it is now a little bit more contrast. And really what I wanted to do is slightly darken and create a little bit more contrast in the foreground because I'm going to turn this into a night photo. This is a uh, kind of a daytime shot for lack of a better word. As you can see, I can always do a before and after. It was uh, actually late afternoon prior to sunset, but there's no sky, nothing fun going on here. It's it's um, well, it's boring, let's just say, but with optics, I can make it a lot of fun. So the next thing I'm going to do, add another layer. I'll go into color and I'm going to go into curves. Now I'm not going to give a tutorial on curves here. If you're not familiar with curves, I definitely recommend learning it. And it's something that's in lots of products, Lightroom, Photoshop, optics, all that kind of stuff. But what I want to do is invert the curve because I'm trying to create a dark sky. And so now I'm going to pull this down. And basically, if you look at the sky, I've not got a black sky, which is great, but my foreground is really kind of messed up. I don't want that foreground. I just want the sky. So this is where the masking capability comes in. Super easy to create a, uh, a powerful and quick mask in optics. And in fact, it's called easy mask. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to choose easy mask. I'm going to make sure that I'm on this icon, which is paint foreground. And all you do is you just come wipe some green into the areas that you want to keep or basically apply that adjustment to. Then I change to this one, which is background. And I'm going to come do that in red, which is telling optics that I don't want the adjustment to be applied to this area. So you don't have to paint every bit of it. You just need to give it some information. Once you're ready, go to this icon, generate mask. And there you go. I can close the overlay you can see what it's done. It's basically just taken that inverted curve and applied it to the sky and I left the foreground unadjusted. So if I turn this off, there it is before white sky. There it is now black sky. That's exactly what I wanted because as I said, I want to make a night photo out of this. But of course, no night photo is complete without some stars. And that's one of the other fun things you can do in Boris. So I'm gonna go ahead and click plus to add a new layer. Here's a cool thing. I'm going to use that mask again. I can just click that mask here and drag it up to this next layer. So I've just duplicated that mask on the new layer. Now I double click to get back up here and the filter I want to use is in the render category. I'm going to click on night sky and I'm going to come over here and click on deep space. 
And there you go. It's just basically taken all of those stars in the deep space filter, which would normally just apply across the entire photo. And because I dragged or basically copied the mask from one layer to the other, it's only applying in the sky. That's of course where stars should be. I should not have stars laying over these mountains or the road. So you can see how quickly it was to isolate the sky with a mask, copy it, paint a bunch of stars into it. And now if I turn this off, you can see I've got a night sky full of stars. Okay, now I need to apply a little bit more mood. So once again, another layer. Remember, every adjustment is effectively its own layer. I'm gonna go back to Film Lab. I'm gonna click on Film Stocks, and that's another great thing about optics. It has so many different film stocks and film emulations and all those kind of things. I'm gonna click the drop down and go to Movie Looks, and I'm gonna get this Finding Nemo. There we go, I like that. It gives it a little bit of a blue tint. And by the way, you can see all these different adjustment options over here. Very powerful, lots of control, lots of things you can do with optics. But I'm just taking advantage of this built-in, let's call it a preset for lack of a better word. But it gives it a little bit of a blue tint, a little bit of mood, and for me, a night shot in the middle of nowhere. This was the Badlands in South Dakota. I just feel like those night shots sometimes look pretty nice if you give them a little bit of blue, just a personal preference. But once again, I'm not done. I have more I want to do. I'm going to click plus, and now I'm going to go into Particle Illusion, which is an incredibly interesting and powerful and frankly fun thing you can do here in Optics. It just lets you apply lots of different effects and fully customize them. So you can do smoke, um, you know, all kinds of things, explosions, fire. I mean, the list honestly is massive. What I want to do here is go into explosions and I've got this boom blast six. So you can see that sticks it on top of the photo. It's way too large. So I'm going to go to world transform and master scale. And I just click and hold that and I drag it to the left. And I just want to shrink this a little bit. So maybe something like about that, which is like a 22. If you can't tell, as I said, I'm creating a bit of a fantasy scape. I can always click this little icon here and then I can move this around. And I just kind of want to put it over here a little bit more in the road. Maybe something about like that. Now I can come into particle properties and do all kinds of things here. I might experiment with random seed, which as you can see, it just adjusts how that explosion looks. As I drag it, it just changes, right? So I think I'll go back to zero and just use the default, but I wanted to point out, as with everything in optics, you have massive amounts of customization available. I'm gonna scoot this over one tiny little bit more. I want it to be a little bit more centered in the road. And you might think, why is there an explosion in the middle of the road, Jim? Well, I told you it's a bit of a fantasy scape. It's a day shot. I turned into a night shot. There's an explosion in the road. But how did the explosion get there? Well, that's where we're gonna do one more thing, which is add another layer back in Particle Illusion. And this time I'm going into their sci-fi category. And here's a, a fun thing called an energy beam. So this energy beam makes it look like it's flying down from out of space, like a meteor has landed in the middle of my photo. So I can just drag that to position it where I want to. Once again, I can go to World Transform. I'm gonna increase the master scale on Y, which is basically gonna lengthen that fire trail or whatever you wanna call it, so that it's coming from out of frame. I'm also gonna go into particle properties. And here, again, you can experiment with all kinds of things. I'm gonna increase the size a little bit, which you can see is just intensifying and kind of broadening the light itself. I'm gonna try a little bit of random seed as well. And you can kind of see what that's doing. I kind of like that. That looks pretty neat like that. I think I'll just leave it like that. Again, I can turn this off and I've now got my photo basically built. So if I click the before and after, I mean, you can see we've come a long way. I mean, a late afternoon kind of golden hour-ish, pre-sunset shot, blown out sky, now a night sky full of stars with some kind of meteor thing exploding. I'm happy with what I've done here in Optics. I'm gonna go ahead and click apply, send it back to Lightroom and actually do a little bit more touch up. Okay, back in Lightroom. And I think the first thing I wanna do is crop this into a 16 by nine. I'm gonna get a little bit of that extra road out of the side and drop it like about like that. Go ahead and click done. And now I'm gonna add a little bit of contrast and just kind of play with some of these things. Maybe brighten the highlights a little bit. Maybe drop a little bit of shadows. Maybe a little clarity would help. Yeah, clarity is always a good one. Something about like that. And that's really it. I just wanted to do a little bit of touch up to just to further customize the image here in Lightroom. But as you can see, I did a whole lot with it over in Optics. If you recall, that's what my photo looked like before. And that's what my photo looks like now. 
That's the power of optics. It's just a lot of fun. It's a very capable editor and it gives you all these creative things that you can do that you would probably either not be able to do in another app or just never think to be able to do in another app. It's just a lot of fun. That's why I wanted to come back and do another example. Check out that first video that I already referred to if you haven't seen that. And I'll be back with more videos about optics and some of the creative and fun things you can do. But I wanted to share this. I was having a lot of fun with this photo, to be honest. I thought you might enjoy it as well. Thanks for watching, my friends. I appreciate it. You guys take care of yourselves. I will see you in the next video. And until then, adios.